Hello everyone, this is Serama and you are watching Board Gaming Ramblings and welcome to another Every Game in the Collection video. Today I am not standing on the floor. Uh, if you could see me now, I'm actually standing on a chair and I still almost can't reach the top shelf this time. So uh, I'm not going to take out the games this time for obvious reasons. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think we'll manage this. Um, first game we're going to talk about is Flip Ships. This is a cool dexterity game where you flip these small ships in the cardboard tokens and you're trying to, um, yeah, aim at these. Um, it's kind of like an arcade of enemy alien ships coming towards you, shooting at the earth and with the like big mothership in the background. So you're trying to fend off as many of these small ships as possible, but also aiming for destroying the mothership all the way back. I'm horrible at this game, but I still really like it. Uh, your head ships have these cool special abilities that uh, if you don't miss, you can, if you don't um, hit a target, then you can try one more time. That's one. I need that very much. And also if you hit one, you also hit the adjacent target. That is really cool. The next up we have Magic Maze. I think you kind of can see it over there. This is a co-op game where you're, it has a super cool theme. You're these uh, heroes, but to go to your next quest, you need some equipment. You need an ax, you need a bow and you need a staff and you don't have it. So you steal it from a mall, <laughs> but you don't have to be really quiet while doing it. I think it's the theme, so you can't talk to your other team teammates and you're not in charge of your own dude. Everyone is in charge of every, of every hero, but you have, I'm in charge of One Direction. So you have to be really, on edge here, look at, okay, who of these four guys need to go, go in the direction up? Because I, only I can do that. And if I miss that, I don't see it. I don't see anyone that goes up. Then my other team players can just like put this token in front of me and like, come on, you need to do something. And just, it's super panicking. Um, very frustrating when people don't see what you're supposed to do. And maybe you ha have like are almost out of time and there's a bunch of different levels. I played this with my family actually and they were, we got a little good at it. And then we like up the difficulty with the special missions and uh, stuff. It was really cool. And the next game is Chimera Station. I have only played this once. This is a... Uh, work a placement game where you're making your own workers. So you have like these three factions that are better at some things than the others. So you're trying to like make, hmm, this worker, should he be best at this or of the other things? Or should I make him a like super balanced so he can be as good at anything that he wants to do? Uh, I thought it was interesting. I really want to play that one again. Johannes really likes it. Uh, Next up is Takenoko. This is a super cute game with a panda that goes around and eats your all of your bamboo. So <laughs> uh, this is actually one that we've had in our collection for some time now. Uh, it's great to play with people that I want to introduce to board gaming. It's kind of a gateway game and I really like it. You have these missions on your hand and you want to either build uh, specific patterns of bamboo uh, forests in different colors or you want to have like chopped down different bamboos in different colors and like that is a mission and also have uh, I think a panda standing on a tile with some bamboos on it yeah there's different missions um, and you have this weather die that you throw and also you have just like two actions that can do so you have a little limited what you can do each round and yeah i think it's a it's a, it's a cool game 
I really like it and it's super pretty. I think there's a deluxe version with like a huge panda. That would be awesome. Um, Spring Meadow is a Tetrumino game from Uwe Rosenberg. Uh, played that one once I think. It didn't make a huge impression on me. You're building Tetrumino pieces on a grid and you're trying to like hike upwards in the mountain I think. Um, yeah, pretty straightforward, pretty simple and it takes a, a short amount of time to play so it's, it's a neat game. Uh, I think I like Indian Summer better, but I've played that more though. Um, same concept, Tetrimino pieces you're trying to put out on your player board. Uh, it's a little blocking and seeing what other people want to, uh, what pieces they want for this themselves. And also there's this uh, hole in some of the pieces that you can like fit over to cover up specific, specific symbols on your grid. And then you get like special powers and you can do a little bit of extra cool stuff. So yeah, an okay game. It takes a short amount of time to play, so that is neat. The next game is Lorenzo Il Magnifico. And this is a really interesting worker placement game because your workers' value are based on three dice that you roll. And those dice are the same for everyone, so you can't really say, oh, I got unlucky and you got really lucky this time. Oh, yeah, kind of, but I think that concept in itself is really cool. You have this four towers that you acquire new cards to your tableau, and those cards are basically new action spaces where you can try to get an engine going. It's a, a little complex, but do, not too complex, but it can be a little harsh with uh, some of the blocking like the first time you play it, I think. Uh, next up is Altiplano. Uh, this is from the designer that did Orleo. Uh, what I like better about Altiplano is the actual bag, bag building, because you're building a bag like in Orleo, but when you're finished with one round, you don't put all of the uh, workers tokens that you used back in the bag immediately you place them in a little what do you call it crate and when your bag is empty then you fill up your bag again so you always go through all the pieces in your bag that makes it a little more uh, yeah, a little less random and I like that what I like better in Oreo than this one is that this I felt like I kind of um, you're kind of forced to do one strategy if you get, because you get special player powers that, oh, you, you're good at fishing, or you're good at, yeah, llama wool. Yes, alpaca wool, yes. So you're kind of sometimes forced to play a strategy that you might have played before, or when you play with them all, you kind of, yeah, there's not like the through the roof replayability here. I'm not saying it is in Orleo, but here I'm more familiar with the problem. Uh, but the bag building in itself, I love it in this game. Next up we have Gloss Road, and this, as you can see, is <laughs> the last Euro game on this shelf. You can kind of, when I'm standing like this, you can kind of get a sneak peek of what we're going to talk about later. Well, uh, in Lost World, this is a game from Yumi Rosenberg, and I think the actions in this game is really interesting. It's based on the same card playing as in um, Broom Service. So you're trying to outmaneuver your opponents to see, okay, I see that you're going to play like some woodcutting this turn, then I'm not going to do that. Uh, so I will play something different than I need. So you're trying to take advantage of the cards that other players play and also try to play some day something different so I think that is cool um, it also have a really uh, cool resource wheel I don't remember exactly what it is but you're basically trying to convert basic resources into like advanced resources like glass and that you can use for things in the game yes uh, next up we have a cool little game called Louis, Looping Louie. This is just silly. Yeah, it, you have this <laughs> machine 
spinning this guy on uh, on the plane, Louis, uh, around, and you're trying to like a uh, swing of some sort and catapult him away from your chickens so he don't drive on your fly on your chickens. <laughs> yeah, it's super silly. Next up here we have two ice cool games. So we have the original ice cool. This is a really cool family dexterity game where you're in this school that is like kind of the box just put together and the penguins are trying to you're flicking the penguins around to avoid uh, being catched and also collecting the most fish. So that is really fun. We played that with our nephew and he really enjoys it. Uh, we also have Ice Cold Pyramid of the Plank Queen. This is more like a, um, a labyrinth game where you're also trying to not be caught, uh, but trying to go around and collect these different symbols and trying to stay hidden. So that is also enjoyable. Uh, we also have another kids game over there, Talk Talk Woodman, uh, that is also dexterity. You have this um, stem of a tree and you're trying to knock it with a with an axe, I think, and trying to uh, like the only the bark on the outside of the tree falls off and not the inside. So you're not. Uh, what is this game? You're not trying to cut the tree? No, you are not. You just want the outside of the tree, not the inside. Yeah. Super thematic, I think. Uh, and next up, the last game on the shelf is Fun Farm. This is a stress game uh, for also kids and families. This is actually a little cool because you have these super cute animals that you're trying to catch, but you have to see what, what the colors of the dice that you roll matches which card that belongs to the different animals. And it's a little tricky to uh, get it sometimes. And people often take like the wrong animal. And pl but playing it with small kids is really cool. I think it says from six and up. Yeah, and I think that is pretty pretty accurate. So this was a mixed shelf. It was a little uh, ish heavy classic Euro games over here, like medium ones. And then it's just kids games. And as you can see down in the shelf, we have a mixed bag here. This this is going to be a, a fun ride, I think. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, you've been watching Body and Ramblings and uh, bye bye.